Hello everyone and uh, welcome to yet another video in this series where we learn how to use the Unreal Engine 4. Sorry it's been a while since my last video. I've been a little bit sick. I still kind of am, so bear with me. In this episode we're going to look over interfaces in Unreal Engine 4's blueprint system and what good they actually are. Like, What can you use interfaces for? In this example we're going to use the interfaces in Blueprint to make a use system. So use systems are fairly common in first person and third person games, a lot of other games too honestly, where if you stand in front of an object you can walk up to it, press a button, typically E in first person shooters, and then whatever is in front of you will be activated as sort of an object that you just like use, like a sink or a toilet or um, like a light switch on the wall or something like that. That's, that's, you know, that kind of system is what we want to make today. So what is an interface? An interface is a contract between two entities, right? So it's basically you have a class and you need this class to have certain, you know, specific uh, functions or s specific functionality. You don't really care about the implementation underneath. You just need this object to have this functionality. So an interface is the answer to that because you can use an interface on many different objects and it'll be the same functionality you call every time but the implementation underneath might be different. And we'll you know, show how this works today. So in this case, I have two objects that I've made. I have this one called the BP light box. All it does is it switches a light on and off basically. So you know, is the light turned on, true, then turn it off, and if it's turned off, then turn it on. So pretty simple stuff. Uh, then I have another one, which is called BP Texture Sweat Box, and in here I've made a little array of uh, five different materials, sorry, six different materials. Uh, then I just set it to the first one in that array. And then I made a little uh, branch thing going on here where I just iterate through that array basically. Um, it's, it's nothing, there's nothing fancy here, honestly. Uh, might actually just need to copy this, I just realized. Can I still, I probably can't do that because it replaces. Okay, you know what? Let's fix this up real quick. I just realized there was an, an issue with what I already made. Okay. Here we go, and in there. All right, yeah, so using this uh, bit of logic here would simply just change the material on the box. So instead of it looking like this, it would switch to something else. So those are two very different um, use cases for a use system, but I'm going to use the same interface to implement both of them, which is very cool. So first of all, we're going to go and make a blueprint interface. We're going to call it the use interface. You can call it whatever you want, but I like to call these things interfaces so it's easier to search for if I need a lot of them. And when you open up the interface, you'll notice that it just has something called new function zero and very little else. That's because in an interface, you're only allowed to define what is called signatures, which means that you are only allowed to basically define what functions are called, but not how they're implemented, like I said before. So in here, we're gonna make a function called use, or use object, just to make it a little more specific. And that's all actually. We don't need any input on this function. We don't need any output on this function. We could add a lot of functions in here that we wanted objects to have or to implement, but we for now, for now we're only gonna have use object, so that's fine. So with this interface in hand, let's go into our BP Lightbox. And in here, again, you can pause the video and just copy what I have. It's a very, very simple setup. Uh, we are going to open the class settings and then say we want to implement an interface. So let me find our use interface right here. So now this is implemented, basically, which means Whatever functions this interface have, we now have access to as events. So let's get the use object. Uh, oh, 
I might have to compile it. Use object event. Here we go. So I just plug this in here, and there we go. I now have something that'll switch this light on and off whenever this use function use object function is called. And we can do the same for our material or our, yeah, our material or the texture switch box here. So get I'm gonna leave this here just for a little bit so you can pause the video if you wanna copy it all. And here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into class settings, add a new interface, use the use interface, compile, and then say use object, event use object. There we go. Plug it in there. And there we go. We actually now have two, uh, oh, what is this saying? It, it need, oh, it needs a target, of course. Um, plug it in, didn't it, to the static mesh component here? Silly me. All right, so with this, we now have two objects that have very different behavior, one of them turning a light on and off, and another one uh, iterating through materials as I use it multiple times. But they can both be called using the same function. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So going into our player character uh, uh, blueprint here, I made a very simple raycast. Uh, if you don't know what a raycast is, uh, links on the screen up in the upper right corner to another video I made where you can see how raycasts are, are used and what they actually are. Uh, so I throw out this raycast and then we say, did we hit anything? Because of course we're only interested if we hit something. And I say, well, we hit an actor. Okay, does this actor implement an interface? And this is where the magic happens because then we say, does it implement our use interface? Oh, true, make a new branch. And we say, does this implement that? And if it does implement this interface, then we say, well, take this actor here and call, oh, wait, sorry. Say use object message, right? So we know that our object currently uses this interface and because we know this we can with confidence use this message here that is from our interface so when we start the game now it should be that when i press e now while i'm looking at this box it should turn the light off and it did and if i press it again it should turn it on and it did and if i go to this box over here it should switch to another material and it did and i can keep going because i've added a couple so as you see, these two boxes had vastly different functionality, but I could easily make two use cases out of it with a single interface, which is the beauty of interfaces. Now let's try and take a more real scenario, uh, just leaving this. I've made a scene earlier today. Uh, let's call him the Here in Our Maps. Call it in the hospital. It's a little bit of a spooky setting here. I'm just gonna play it out so you can see what it looks like. So this is a scene that I made earlier today, just to sort of, you know, get more familiar with level design, but also just to have something for, for this showcase. And what I wanna do is this box over here, when I press E on it, uh, like that, then it should turn off all the lights in here. Okay, so let's go into our blueprints. And let's go into our power box, power box blueprint, which is hanging here. And let's implement the use interface. All right, so right now we have nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, so I've added a lights to control uh, array over here. And that's because I wanna be able to take this box, place it in a level, and then just tell it here how many lamps it needs to take care of in the scene. So let's add those lamps. We have one, two, three, four. So four of those. Then we go and find them. Oh, that's not right. Let's see, BP lamp. It already knows what it is because it can only take one kind. Three and four. All right. And inside the lamp uh, blueprint, we have two point lights, point light left and point light right. 
and they are both components down here so you know we should be able to find them so let's go into let's close some of these tabs here okay let's go into our power box first of all let's just get this implemented straight out of the way so that's done with right use interface compile and then use object event use object all right so this is where it needs to start from okay so let's take this array we have here and then just ask basically uh, length and the reason we ask for length is we want to make sure that it's actually greater than zero like if there are any if there are no lights in this thing then we don't want to go through it then it's a waste of time so we'll just not do anything so if there is nothing in here we ignore this use call basically however if there is something in here then we have to use this boolean which says is power turned on in this case it is turned on from the get-go so let's just set that as a default to true okay and then we ask again we say this is true so there are lamps in here that we can manipulate okay well is the power turned on right now because if the power is turned on then we want to turn it off of course and if it's turned off then we want to turn it on so let's take this or actually let's take that and just set it straight away just set it straight away get it out of the way okay these two all right okay so now we need to iterate over all of these uh, light lights we have here now how do we do that in unreal there is or well in programming in general there is a for each loop which goes through every single thing in the array in this case so let's execute this for each loop and for each array element we say let's see point light right get point light right yeah okay and we also just straight out of the way you know say point light left Okay, so now we have our two lights uh, on, on the lamp that we're currently working on in this array. And then we have to do something with this. So we already we have already done something like this in the, the light box that I have. So let's try and steal a little bit of, of blueprints from in here because we're lazy. Like this. Okay. So this target here needs to have its intensity set to zero because Oh, wait, no, I'm doing the turned on one, so it's not zero. The actual light needs to be, what did I set it to? Let's have a look. 15. All right, so its intensity needs to be 15 when we turn it on. And we're going to do this to both the lights, so we just do them one by one like this. It's going to go fast enough that you can't tell the difference anyway. So let's just do that, all right? And of course, we have to actually execute this body up here so let's just drag a little arrow in there let's see line it up nicely come on there we go and you know what i'm just gonna leave this here it looks better and then re reroute it like this there we go now you could actually customize uh this even further and just have a value out here in your variables that sets the intensity uh, so you don't have to go in and change it like I do. But, you know, we're being lazy today. For a designer, like for a game designer, you would construct this blueprint in such a way that these intensity values would also be editable out here in your variables because that's a lot nicer. Uh, you would also make this power turned on uh, variable uh, editable like this so that the system knows from the get-go whether the, the power is turned on or off. So just a few, you know, notes there. So let's take this and just copy all of it. Come on, like that. Copy every single thing because we're gonna do it twice. One for power turned on and one for power turned off. So in this for each loop, we are going to turn the power off. Let's move this up a little bit, okay. So set this to zero and set this to zero, okay. So now, 
we are turning, let's see, yeah, we're turning the power off and we can turn the power back on. So let's see if this works. Just adding that interface and okay, so we, we are getting used to the light in here. Okay, we walk over to our box. Hmm, nothing happened. Okay. It's actually not registering a hit at all. That's curious. Because it does have a static mesh on it. Huh. We might have to. Let's just look here real quick. Line trace. By channel, perhaps. Yeah, let's let's switch it to channel instead of type of object actually. Shouldn't really be that big of a deal. It's the same thing all the way. And then we will put this in here and put this in here and then remove all of that. Okay, let's see if this works instead. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it actually works. The lights turned very dim at, the, at least. I mean, they should turn off. Right now, what you would do is you would also switch the uh, material on all of these lamps so that they had uh, dynamic materials instead so that this emissiveness would disappear. But for all intents and purposes, this power box currently works. As you can see, I can turn the lights on and off. I can play around with it and everything. And this was very easy to do. If you notice, it was very, very easy to do because we used interfaces. So you can make lots of things with this. The whole point of this interface thing is that you don't really care what it is you've got a hold of as such. You just care about whether it implements your interface or not. You could, with this system in place, you could make a lot of different use cases for this um, and get something cool out of it. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please leave comments below, like and subscribe or dislike. Tell me why you didn't like it, if, you, if that's the case. I want to improve, of course. And uh, I'll see you next time.